transition problems would really connect to what you were doing in graphing. Because if you want to find a maximum or a minimum, we've already learned in graphing, that's always when the slope of the tangent is zero. So if you find your derivative and set it equal to zero, you can find a max or minimum problem. So all max or min problems, you'll find the derivative, set it equal to zero, and then be able to answer the question. You solved your first max min problems in grade 11 when you did parabolas. And you learned how to complete the square to find the vertex of the parabola. There's also this special formula for the axis of symmetry, which is also the x coordinate of the vertex. So you can always find an axis of symmetry by taking the negative of the b value and divide it by 2a. Of course, you probably didn't learn this formula or memorize it. You would have just completed the square to find it. But as this says, these were specialized techniques for finding the vertex of a parabola, and they only work for a parabola. This is why calculus is so much more powerful. The derivative and setting it equal to zero works for any function. Okay, so a ball is thrown vertically upwards. We've got a formula which tells us right away that this is not thrown on this earth because if you actually found the second derivative for acceleration, the acceleration would be minus 2 instead of minus 9.8. Okay, but that's all right. We can still imagine we're on some different planet with different gravitation, and this ball was thrown up in the air. Calculate when it's at a maximum, and find the value of y at that time. So this is a parabola. You could do completing the square like you would have done in grade 11, but now that we have calculus, the derivative is easy to find, easy to set that derivative equal to zero and solve and often in a graphing question right if you were a graphing question you would put 7.5 onto your derivative line here and find out that it was positive of 4 and negative afterwards and see from your first derivative test that it was a maximum Sometimes in optimization questions, you can get away from that because they're going to tell you, find the maximum. And you're like, okay, so this would be the only value that would possibly work. Then to find the actual height, okay, calculate the time. It's going to be at 7.5 seconds. We should put our units in here. Is it seconds or minutes? Seconds. And at 7.5 seconds, y is going to equal, and here we would plug in the 7.5 into the original equation. And get our answer. So the maximum, oh, I typed it in wrong to my calculator. Let's now just fifty-six point two five. There we go. So here's another question from grade 11.
And in this example, I'd say start off by showing a picture. Fred wants to enclose a rectangular parking lot with 60 meters of fence. Love these questions because then no cars can get in or out. Hopefully he would include a gate. Um, there's a building on one side. So here is my building. And I'm going to enclose the parking lot with fence. But you don't need the fence on the side of the building. Find the maximum area that Fred can enclose. And he has 60 meters of fence in total. So we want to find a maximum area. So we're going to want to write an equation that is area equals. Now, you can make the area x times y, but the problem is that then you have two variables and you either have to use implicit differentiation. What we're going to want to try to do is create an equation that uses only one variable. So if I make that side x, that would also make this side x. And since I have 60 meters of fence in total, you should be able to tell me how much goes here. Okay? If we use numbers, it's really easy. If x is 10, this is 10, 10, and you'd be like, oh, there's 40 left. If x is 15, you go, oh, it's 15, 15. How much is left? 30. And once you do it with regular numbers, you have to sort of take a step back. Because sometimes the regular numbers are so easy that you don't see how to do the algebra. But if you take a moment to look at when I put 10 here and 10 here, I just had to subtract both of these away from 60 to find out how much was left here. Now if I think about that in algebra, this is just going to be, well, I have 60 total, but I've used up 2x so far. That's how long that side will be. And now my equation for area is length times width. And I've got an equation that, if I distribute that x, I've got an equation for the area just in terms of x. In grade 11, you would have the same question and completed the square to find the vertex. Now that we've learned calculus, how easy is it to find the derivative and set the derivative equal to zero and solve for x is 15? A lot quicker than completing the square. Okay. Fred wants to park it. There's a building on the side. Okay. Find the maximum area, so we need to find plug in 15. It'll be 15 times 30. Four hundred and fifty meters squared. So again, in these word problems, always take the time to read them at the end, to make sure you're answering all the questions. Sometimes they say, what's the maximum area and the dimensions? What's the maximum area and the dimensions? And make up Fred's middle name. I don't know. They, you, sometimes there's extra stuff there that you have to um, come up with. All right, so we'll stop there.